On November the 29th, 2001, driver Gordon Harrington left Stirling Station bound for Glasgow Queen Street at the end of a long shift. Unfortunately for Gordon, Stirling middle signal number 70 was at danger and he missed it. I've been a driver for 22 years. I've been on the footplate for 28 years. I've been a health and safety rep for Aslef for 10 years. I have taken part in signal sighting committees. I have taken part in cab environment committees. And yet on this particular day, it happened to me. Do not let it happen to you. We're going to see three real life SPAD incidents reconstructed and analyzed. In the interests of a safer railway, these three drivers are prepared to relive and speak openly about events they would much rather forget. Back in November, Gordon Harrington's eventful day began like any other, signing on at Glasgow at 3.15 in the afternoon. And the early part of the shift went smoothly enough. Things started to go wrong after Gordon took a scheduled PNB at Perth at 6 o'clock and left for Dundee driving another unit. This service was already running behind schedule when it was held at a signal to give priority to another train which was about to cross the Tay Bridge. As a consequence of this delay, by the time Gordon left Dundee, his train was running 35 minutes late. Because of this, it was decided somewhere else that my train bike, because I've got a very short turnaround time of only 15 minutes at Aberdeen, it was decided by somebody else that my train bike would be worked so far down for me and I would swap over. There was a change to his booked diagram. To make some sense of the timetable, another driver was going to take over his return service. Gordon was instructed to make a special stop and swap over to another southbound train. This meant that he would miss his next rostered PNB. On leaving Perth, I should have gone up to Aberdeen and had a 15 minute turnaround at Aberdeen, which is long enough to go to the toilet, get a cup of tea, stretch your legs. On this particular day, because we were running late, the train was swapped over at Port Lethen, so it's a very quick get out of one train onto the other. At this point, Gordon's difficult day was about to get worse. On top of everything else, he had to cope with a serious engine fault, a loss of pressure in the main reservoir. What I noticed was that by shutting the throttle so far, stop the early captain. So it was a fine measure of giving it enough throttle to get going, but not giving it too much that I was in danger. It can be very stressful uh, trying to drive a train that you know at any minute can break down. It's more stressful at night when following services are limited. You know then that if something happens, you're going to have problems getting assistance. It's stressful in the sense on that particular occasion because it was the end of my shaft. I was just wanting home. Knowing that the unit was in urgent need of repair before it could go into service again, Gordon completed the fault report as soon as he could. When the train made its approach to Stirling Station just before 11 o'clock, Gordon had been driving non-stop for just over three and a half hours. No chance to stretch his legs, use the loo or have a cup of tea. This is when things went really wrong. Oi, you're gonna fax me that off the control, please. At that particular moment, a passenger who got off my train inquired about the connecting train that had already left and he started to argue with the man on the platform. And in the ensuing melee, I never set the DRA. As the man argued with the platform attendant, platform staff and gave the conductor the right of way. The conductor immediately just shut the doors and gave me the two buzzers to go. I took this and started to move the set, but because I had a problem with it, and because once again on leaving Stirling there was another incline, I checked where the air was and watched it for the couple of seconds just to make sure everything was okay. I then looked up and saw that the signal was still at danger. The weather conditions were not favourable. It was showery with a gentle mist. So 
the signal was very hard to see and not only that, the track was very damp. So when I put the brake into emergency, the set just continued to slide and unfortunately we passed the signal by about a coach and a half. The consequences had the train continued could have been a lot graver because there was a train arriving at another platform and crossing the front of me. So the consequences could have been grave. It's impossible to reproduce the precise weather conditions of that murky November night. But even in summer conditions, when we reconstructed the incident, Signal 7-0 was hard to make out from the driver's cab. How much does signal design and the general infrastructure contribute to SPAD risk? We asked ScotRail's operational standards manager, Robert Plant. The biggest problem we have with infrastructure maintainer is in terms of signal design uh, and installation. Um, they realise that now. They realise that you know, they, they can't just plan a signalling scheme, go along and institute that signalling scheme, and that we, the train operator, just have to comply with it and drive to their design. Uh, that is not the case. This involves planning, detailed planning, with the train operators involved, so that at a very early stage in the design process, SPAD risk is identified. It wasn't only Gordon Harrington who got it wrong that night. The station attendant and the guard should both have checked the signal before clearing the train for departure. We, I believe in the industry been very hard on drivers over the last few years, but the SPAD problem is much wider than that. Uh, it involves much more people. Um, you know, you have station dispatchers, you have conductors, you have signalers. They're all involved, uh, so it's not solely a driver's problem. The rail industry has lacked for years technical aids to, to terrain driving. Then it is available uh, in the world, uh, automated trains that don't run by red signals. Things are beginning to come right in the UK now with the advance of TPWS and ERTMS in the future. Gordon Harrington belongs to a generation of drivers who came into the industry when things were very different. Statistically, are these older drivers more likely to have SPADs than their younger colleagues? We are probably more at risk from the inexperienced drivers. Having said that, training of train drivers nowadays, I believe, is far more advanced than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, the downside to that is that drivers would say that ah, about 20 years ago we did an apprenticeship and you know you virtually sat beside a driver for five years before you even went for a driver training program. It's 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 not to dis, uh, demean that you know that, that that was very useful. That's the route that I uh, came through myself to become a driver and virtually you went know, in an inspector grade and then a manager ultimately. Um, what I mean is that the the age that we have now to train drivers is far more advanced. We know much more that helps a driver prepare himself for the role of driving a train and uh, being a professional driver. Lots of factors contributed to Gordon Harrington's SPAD, but in the final analysis, it was his failure to set the DRA that was crucial. Do older drivers have difficulties with this kind of innovation? The National Express Group has done a lot of research into the kind of drivers who have been involved in SPADs. Lynn Milligan, a human factor specialist with Wales and Borders, explains what they've discovered. We noticed last year, or at the tail end of the year before, that SPADs tended to be occurring in the business with less experienced drivers uh, and drivers that were over 40 years of age. So we commissioned some occupational psychologists that we work with quite frequently and we said, can you do some real analysis of this data and tell us if there is something in this or not? The interviewers went out and did some quite sophisticated research with both um, new drivers and trainees under and over 40, those who did incidents and those who hadn't, as well as their trainers and the, their managers. And what began to emerge from that was that with, with ex-conductors, there may be higher peer pressure from colleagues uh, to do better, uh, which puts pressure on people. I kind of think that you, well, you should know this. You've been in the industry for a year, two years plus. 
you should know all of this stuff. So a sense of a higher peer pressure and perhaps an overconfidence uh, from those people in training and post-training that may be a contributory factor. Dave Boyce, known to everyone at Valley Lines as Max Boyce, started life on the railway as a guard and then retrained to become a driver. Max's new career got off to a dramatic start. Um, I started driving out on my own uh, in January and then in May um, I was doing 60 mile an hour towards a crossing called Barry Rides. Uh, on the approach to the crossing I blew the horn and within about 20 seconds uh, a large object hit the screen of my train which shattered the train and showered me with glass. Later found out that it was a stone which was thrown by a teenage boy Trains going cards. to school at 8 o'clock in the morning. The train was badly damaged and taken out of service. Max didn't escape unscathed either. I had slight facial cuts across my nose here. Max was taken off the duty roster for a week to get over this traumatic incident. Then he was back in the cab, driving with a supervisor, just to make sure that he'd recovered his composure and was fully competent to resume his duties. But if they were expecting a routine trip, they were in for a surprise. Whilst being assessed by the assessor, coming down towards Cardiff, we come on, on the approach to Radha Station, I noticed um, something in the distance. God, look, there's somebody in the track. You contact the signal and I'll tell the guard what's happening. Okay. This woman was about 60 um, and she was in the middle of the track. Luckily, this was a passenger service and we had to stop at this platform. If it hadn't have been a passenger service but an empty stock, we would have been travelling through there approximately 50 miles an hour. And he dealt with the incident with textbook efficiency. Max was passed fully fit to go back to work. And then... Um, the very next day I was on my way down from Rumney towards Penarth and I actually had a SPAD signal pass at danger at Bargoid. On the way up to Bargoid, um, we were in um, Pengam Station at line speed and there were two young lads um, firing their rifles um, along the track. I blew the horn and stopped. Bloody kids! Finally stopping, they actually ran away into the bushes opposite. Because the lads with an air rifle were a potential risk to other trains, Max reported them to Bargoid's signal box and the signalman set the signal to danger. Ironically, it was this very signal that Max was about to miss on the return journey. After his experience with a shattered windscreen, Max is keen to protect his eyes and he wears his company issue sunglasses a lot. But on this particular day, after he had prepared the train for its return journey from Rumney to Cardiff, he went to fresh himself up in the gents and completely forgot to put his sunglasses back on. According to Max, this oversight played a big part in the events that happened later. As I left Brister, I headed down the track towards Bargoid. Um, I had the AWS ramp, which I cancelled, which told me that, uh, that there was a fixed distance on the approach to Bargoid. And then went down the slope, which is quite a distance away from the actual signal. As I went down the slope, um, there were sheep on the track. Um, not wanting to hit the sheep, I braked and also made sure that the sheep were clear. Um, by taking my concentration off the track, I missed the slight glimpse of the, the signal which would allow us to see whether the, the signal was on or off. Uh, as I went under the bridge, the sunlight hit me in the face. I actually reached for the sun visor which was all the way to the top of the screen. When I actually pulled this, the visor down, I then noticed that the signal was still on. I then applied the brake, by which stage it was too late. The signal protecting Bargoid station 
is only visible to the approaching driver for about a second and a half before the train snakes around another bend. Even if the driver had a longer time window to spot the signal, it isn't easy to see. And again, like the one at Stirling, it's an old semaphore signal. Um, there's a possibility that um, the previous problems which I'd had may have been playing on my mind. Um, obviously, I'm not certain because when, once, once you've had an experience like a SPAD, there are a lot of things that go through your mind and things which you could have done to stop this um, situation happening. After the stone throwing incident, was Max Boyce returned to work too quickly? The train crew manager at Valley Lines is Russell Webb. Uh, we were quite happy that the uh, SPAD was nothing to do with the previous day or the previous week's incidents with the, uh, the crossing and the stone throwing or the woman on the track. I'm not saying that these weren't playing on his mind somewhat, but. Uh, after the investigation, all we could base our findings on with the, the sunlight. And uh, Rail Track have now taken steps to identify this matter and uh, are going to remove the affected signal and uh, replace it with a slightly shorter one. So it'll be easier for drivers to sight rather than have a sight in a one to three seconds. Now, once they sight the signal, they should be able to keep that uh, signal in their line of sight. The forward course is Wessex commitment to reducing SPADs. At Wessex trains, Mike Ball has a training session with some newish drivers. Why use forward? Why not use the word SPAD? Because drivers switch off when you use the word SPAD. Although you shouldn't, you should always remain alert throughout your careers to SPADs. The forward programme is just one initiative to combat what the operational standards manager at Wessex Trains has identified as the driver's worst enemy. Complacency, I think, is one of the one of the things because they go over the same routes day in, day out, day in, day out, and they see the same things. And it's when they see something different, it takes their mind a little to adjust. And I think by actually saying what they're seeing, it, the mind registers a little bit quicker. Okay, Jerry, week four. Yep. Driven this route before. We're going to take the train through to Bristol now. Yep. Uh, I want you to tell me exactly what you're doing before you do it. Yep. If there's anything I think you should be doing, I'll tell you. Okay. Right. We've got uh, clear signal. I've received the signal from the guard and we have the right theatre indication. TV appropriate. Jerry Hatcher has to speak aloud every feature of the route ahead and every action he takes. Two, the engine's picked up, return the guard's signal and now I'm releasing the brake. Not only does this technique enable the minder driver Mark Peters to know what's going through his trainee's mind, but it makes Jerry Hatcher focus on the job in hand. The inspiration for this exercise was the Police Advanced Drivers course, and it's something that any driver can do, any time, any place. Worcester, Shrub Hill Station. One of the regular SPAD awareness briefings is underway. There's a lot of SPAD issues in Red Alert, which um, you should have all have had uh, copy 15. Keeping drivers alert to potential hazards on the railway is a management responsibility. Sometimes it's the personal, very private problems that drivers bring to work that are the real causes of railway accidents. When Bernie Philpott signed on for work at Worcester on March the 3rd, 2002, he was embarking on the worst day of his professional life. The day started as any other. Um, just came into work, booked on as normal. I was, didn't feel under pressure or any, anything and just carried on with my job as, as I was supposed to do. Right, so we, uh, we leave Shirley and um, travelling down the various stations and um, I, whilst we're en route I get this, this buzzer which, which I presume is the guard. Hello? Hello, Steve? And I think, what the hell is he buzzing me for? like? And um, I tried to get in touch with him with a cab to cab and uh, can't get him. So anyway, it stops and um, we carry on and uh, it comes on again, this buzzer does. So. Hello, Steve. Hello, hello. Good God. I'm getting a little bit annoyed now about it and uh, I think you know I'll have to um, say something to him about you know what's going on 
Right, so we get down to Henley and Arden, and I'm thinking I'm going to have a go with this. Have a go at this chap now. Like he's he's been winding me up a bit and acting a go to something. So I go Steve? back and say to him, "Look, what the hell's going on? What do you keep messing with this buzzer for?" And he's denied it. You've been messing around with this buzzer? No. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. it keeps going off, mate. Well, you must be hearing things then, mate. It's so not I know, me. I know what you're like, mate. No, it's not me. You're sure. Positive. Look, right. can I get this train away? Right. OK. OK. Absolutely denied it. And I say, you're not, you've, you've done it. You've been, no, no, it wasn't me saying. And I think, well, what the heck's going on here? Like, you know, so I'm, I'm a bit wound up, I'm a bit concerned about it, a bit wound up. So. We ca anyway, we leave Henley and Arden and uh, off we go. We've, we've gone through Wotton Wowen, approaching Burley, and this damn buzzer starts going again. I'm thinking, you sod, you know, you're, you're doing it again. And, um, you know, I'm starting to slow down for the 50 miles an hour. And this bloody buzzer keeps going off now, and it's wound me up, totally wound me up. And um, I totally missed the distance signal, which was on, which should have... Um, which is telling me that the signal in front is on as well. I've cancelled the AWS ramp. I've got absolutely no memory of seeing the signal or cancelling the ramp because I've allowed something to, to take over my mind, you see. And so we pass the distance signal and I'm powering up and uh, I saw this, this train crossing over and I'm thinking, I knew exactly what had happened then. Oh, shit. My first thoughts were, uh, you know, I braked immediately. Are we going to come off the track? Because the points are set Damn. for a, a different movement, you see. So, and also I'm thinking, I've lost my job. My job's gone. Everything's gone. I have fucked up, basically, big time. And I'm sort of bracing myself for us to come off the road. You know, the train's bouncing around and miraculously we didn't. We crossed over through a switch diamond onto the opposite track and um, nobody was hurt. There was no damage done. Oh, there's nobody hurt. Is there anything? No, no, right. Um. My thoughts were to, to pack the job in, actually. That was, that was what I was going to do. I didn't feel physically ill, but I felt so... I just felt awful. I wasn't sick or anything like that, but I just felt so awful, you know. I just wanted to get out of the railway. You know, you almost wish you could run away and hide somewhere and just hope it'd all go away. But you can't do that. You've got to stop and, and face the inquiry and everything. Because after all, it's your, your fault. It's happened, basically. It was out of character for Bernie to get so agitated by a faulty buzzer or an eccentric conductor. So was there something else going on inside his head? Some deeper anxiety bubbling beneath the surface? Well, I, I was at the time going through a um, settlement with my ex-wife, which could possibly have been an underlying cause, although I didn't think so at the time. And uh, it possibly allowed me to get a little bit irritated with the, with the buzzer problem, which I shouldn't have which I shouldn't have allowed to happen. There's lots of evidence that domestic problems faced by drivers are major factors in SPADs. Over the last few years, we have taken a lot more measures in looking at a driver's lifestyle um, and coupling that with them actually doing the physical job of driving a train. I think in years gone past, the industry's focused more with a driver in actual driving the train and not about the way that he lives his life. If I get in the similar circumstance in the future, I've got any problems, I will talk to the company first before I go out driving again. Everyone on the railway has a part to play in reducing spads. Maintenance engineers, platform staff, rail track, guards, and particularly drivers and managers. When I was a driver, 10, 15 years ago, and if somebody had said to me, we're going to put a switch in the cab that, you know, we want you to press when you stop at a red light, uh, to remind yourself that you've not started the train through the red signal, I would have probably said, you know, they're bar me. But um, now, being in this position, and because I can understand the risks that if we don't get it right, what it can result in, uh, I fully support anything that will help a driver um, prevent that train setting off through a red light.
we are all facing changing times, changing types of pressure, um, and I think we all need to understand that there's no barriers. We need to work together to try and eliminate SPADs as much as we possibly can. And that's to do away with any type of blame culture. We need to forget who's the manager and who's the driver because here, for the grace of God, go us all. The message to you is if it's sunny, wear your railway glasses. If you lose your concentration or there's something on your mind, stop. It doesn't matter how good or how experienced you are. If the conditions are right, the trap is waiting to be sprung. It doesn't matter how clever, how good, whatever you think you are, there are always occasions where the unwary are caught. If any of you have got any problems out there, please talk to somebody about them because it could be the underlying cause of a major incident.